you everyone for coming. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Mohan. <laughs> Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, so, uh, we're Intellect EU. We're one of the founding members of Hyperledger. Um, I'm here to uh, just discuss a little bit about uh, what Hyperledger Fabric is and uh, kind of go over some very basic things, um, a little bit about the architecture and uh, talk a little bit about how at Intellect EU we provide certain tools uh, that help uh, anyone who's interested in running uh, these private networks, uh, you know, and uh, also just go over some uh, uh, reference use cases. So. All right, so uh, I know we're at consensus. There are a lot of blockchains out there. Um, uh, Fabric kind of stands out in terms of it's a it's it's been designed as an enterprise grade protocol. It is designed uh, to work in a private private environment, and one of the key assumptions out here was having uh, some advanced privacy controls that uh, allow member organizations to be comfortable uh, putting putting the data into a network and knowing that uh, all the information they put is secure and only accessible by participating part, uh, partners. Uh, like other blockchain uh, networks, there is a smart contracts component and this is where all your business processes, all your business logic uh, resides. And it's uh, smart contracts, nothing but self-executing code. Uh, it just needs to meet certain criteria, um, and it's a predetermined criteria by the different participating uh, organizations. Uh, all the code and agreements are held uh, across, uh, distributed across the nodes, and uh, when the conditions are right, uh, the business logic is executed. Um, as any blockchain, all transactions are immutable, traceable, and uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, can be seen between participants. Uh, wh what this enables is uh, immediate trust. <laughs> Thank you for joining. <laughs> hey, Chris. Um, yeah, what this is enables is. Uh, if you think from organizational perspective, we're simplifying workflows. There's a lot of time wasted reconciling the transactions in today's world. And as we move into these private permission networks, the idea is you, you condense your 10 hours of reconciling down to seconds, if not instantly. Um, a little uh, bit of the architecture at a high level. So, you know, you have the blockchain, the, the, the ledger itself, and uh, the data is arranged into blocks. Uh, and uh, from these blocks, you basically have the, the current state of the world uh, that can be read by any of the participants. There's a, a consensus mechanism that is uh, making sure that all parties are seeing the same, uh, the same data and, and the same state. And attached to that is chain code. Uh, which is again smart con it's what we call smart contracts in in the hyperledger fabric environment so uh, within the architecture you can have multiple channels you can invite different peers that kind of um, can can talk to each other all the data is uh, private within each channel and uh, uh, you know depending on how the network is set up you can invite uh, other peers to join at any time um, so yeah that's a brief overview out there uh, and then, uh, from a decentralized uh, network perspective, you have uh, certificate authorities. Uh, each each one of the participants uh, is basically uh, assigned one of these. You have participants that are responsible for just doing the ordering, and then you have other peers who can participate in different uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, so, at a high level again, the key features of Hyperledger fa Fabric, uh, it's modular. You, you basically piece together what you need. Uh, it is a permission network, and again, the permission can be tweaked uh, depending on each, each organization that's participating in there. It is designed to be scalable from uh, the get-go. And of course, confidentiality and privacy are key elements of, of this network. And lastly, uh, it, it supports any smart contracts uh, that you can uh, program on it. 
Uh, so the next slides are basically how uh, Intellect EU kind of views uh, the management of Hyperledger Fabric. Fabric. A lot of other member organizations have their own take. Uh, what we found working with a multiple. Uh, a, a, on multiple projects was there was a need to uh, have a coordinated blockchain manager that that could you know where we could share our knowledge with the different parties that we are working with and the idea was to build a platform that makes it very easy to build deploy manage and scale our solutions um, and uh, the way you want to think about our solution is it's, it's a solutions manager so uh, whatever problem you're tackling uh, we reduce the go-to market time for, for that particular solution. Uh, so uh, again, at a high level, it simplifies the managing of certificate authority, rotating those certificates, etc. The monitoring and um, uh, essentially uh, having visibility into the different features of the chain code, what's, what's happening with the peer statuses, and what's, uh, how are other components of the network interacting with each other. And then there's also some support for external orders. Uh, here's uh, again a graphic representation of how uh, our blockchain manager sits on top of uh, Fabric. Now Fabric is of course a, a, a smaller component here, but uh, this is this is an architecture in one way or the other. Anyone who's um, implementing a solution would have to typically uh, deal with. Uh, our solution is cloud agnostic, so you can choose which infrastructure you want to deploy or what mix of infrastructure you want to deploy. And uh, we have done this for many solutions, including programmable money platforms, insurance fraud detection, corporate actions, uh, digital share registry, supply chain tracking, and KYC platform for uh, a banking consortia. Uh, as you can see, the Hyperledger fabric itself is very versatile, uh, and uh, with, with the right um, mix of things, you can actually uh, point it to different problems and build very, very interesting solutions. Uh, so some of the uh, benefits of our uh, platform is it's just 10x easier to go live with your solution. Uh, you reduce a lot of time back and forth. Uh, of course, you could try to do this on your own uh, on, on the platform, but uh, these are just common practices that we've, uh, you know, over time we've seen that need to be done in a certain way. Um, and also, uh, our platform meets 100% enterprise uh, requirements. So when you're talking with larger banks, financial institutions, there's some key elements that need to be taken into account. Uh, so we've already done this for you. And uh, lastly, there's no uh, vendor lock-in in terms of like uh, the cloud infrastructure that you're using. So you still have a lot of flexibility. Uh, so before I jump into reference uh, solutions, uh, any questions I hear? Uh, I know I've been kind of been going through. I was wondering, is this like a, a thing that you sell and people bring up their own, their own nodes and create their own hyperledger network? Or is there one that comes to the network that there's like side chains? Yeah, the, the former. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a, a blockchain uh, management tool. Uh, yes, so we, uh, we we would like you would have a license model, and then on top of that, if you need support, we can we can provide you that. Cool. All right, so uh, just uh, we got like about three four reference solutions you can uh, I'd love to talk about. Uh, the first one was a waste monitoring application, and the the idea was that you know people wanted to be aware of like what what's happening um, in, in terms of. Uh, day to day when they're using things, how much waste is created, what impact is there. So we wanted to make the citizens more aware of the waste production and incentivize recycling. So uh, the idea was uh, the, the, the tokens that were, there was a uh, token engine that was kind of built on Hyperledger Fabric and uh, the, the end consumers could earn these tokens and then redeem those for whatever uh, uh, whatever they want and on, on the ecosystem. So this was something that was very easily enabled by Hyperledger Fabric. Um, 
So that was one way we uh, implemented the solution. Uh, then another one was a mobility application. This one's uh, 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 close to me because it incentivizes uh, kids and students to go and uh, be mo mobile, do, uh, you know, uh, essentially uh, use more bicycles which would actually improve the air quality around the schools and also uh, uh, you know incentivize people to just be moving more physically so the solution was a simple app mobility app and it uh, the students would go uh, on a bicycle and they would actually uh, have a fiat back digital token that they would earn and which they could redeem for other things at local fairs uh, so there was a, definitely an, a component of some gamification, and as a result, uh, the bicycle usage uh, increased by almost 200% in that community. Uh, and today it's being used across 25 Belgian cities. So uh, The next one's a, a loyalty coin. Uh, we uh, collaborated with the, uh, with the European Bank to kind of like implement this. Uh, it, uh, this was released in a closed ecosystem uh, to the uh, consumer base and the idea was uh, it was an incentive mechanism for uh, allowing the participants to get some kind of cash back, some kind of rewards and basically drive uh, loyalty to, to that particular uh, customer's brand. Uh, and uh, you know once, once they ha they've earned some of these things just like your credit card points and stuff, they could, they could go within the ecosystem and purchase things uh, that uh, appeal to them. Uh, building the solution with Hyperledger Fabric was quick, it was scalable, very composable, robust, and uh, it maintained the, the consumer privacy. Uh, last one, this is one of our newer use cases. Uh, uh, Hovis is an organization in, uh, in Belgium and uh, they, uh, this university reached out to us as part of a multi-party project where they were uh, basically uh, tracking um, essentially pigs <laughs> on the blockchain. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, I think, uh, it can be called that market maturity <laughs> at this point. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the, the idea was to integrate knowledge from different domains and um, uh, to improve uh, essentially uh, the research in, uh, in, in the agriculture side of things, specifically to pigs. Uh, and um, you know, there was uh, uh, the components of blockchain allow, allowed them to have transparency and traceability uh, within the pig, pig production and uh, processing chain. So. Um, and yeah, again, we use the, uh, the Catalyst Blockchain Manager to deploy a Hyperledger Fabric-based uh, solution. And uh, uh, as, as you can see out here, one, one of the engineers uh, was uh, overcome with joy because it made his life very, very easy. And uh, you know, our, our support team was able to help them get, to this, get the solution to production really fast. So uh, you know, that's... Uh, uh, end of the <laughs> presentation any any uh, questions i can answer